This is my personal project for Heritage Week 2020, but I hope I can inspire heritage groups around the country to try and make their own heritage trail map for next Heritage Week or even still during this Heritage Week. So let's get started. First, you will have to go to the UMAP website. I will put the link in the description. You can sign in and I would recommend signing in with OpenStreetMap because if you discover that there's a feature missing in the map, you can easily just edit the map to your liking. You don't have to log in. You can just click on create a map. But just in case you have to go somewhere and you want to come back and work on it, just sign in and you can save it. This is what you see first. The next thing you want to do is change the name of your map. So in the left corner, top left corner, you see untitled map. You click on the pencil and you put in your name, the name for your map, and also a description. And you can format and change everything later on. This is not written in stone, unlike the benchmarks. And then after every step, save just to be safe. And it says here, it gives you a link because you were not logged in where you can edit it. But as I said before, it's safer to get an account with OpenStreetMap and log in. And then your name is displayed at the top left. And as you can see, the background map is French because UMAP is hosted on a French website. You might want to change that. You click on the layer icon and choose OpenStreetMap, just the standard OpenStreetMap view, just for now. And then you zoom into your area. In my case, that is Kilkenny. And we're going to start at Kilkenny Castle. So that's where I'm zooming into. Just to show you a few of the examples of maps that are available. If you scroll down there, there is um, the Positron one, which is black and white and doesn't have the shops and anything like that. It's really simple street map. Uh, if you scroll down, there is an open cycle map. If you want to make a cycling trail map, that's very useful. It shows all the pubs for rehydration, uh, public toilets, and more importantly, bicycle shops, in case you have a flat tire or something like that. Or if you want to make a map for people in kayaks, there is one called the OSM Open River Boat Map. I haven't actually ever used it, so I'm not quite sure what it focuses on. But you see it, it has public toilets displayed, which is useful. We're just going back to the standard open street map, but it's completely up to you which background map you want to use. In the next step, we're adding the first point of interest or stop on our trail. On the right, on the top, you click draw a marker and you place your marker and click on the map and it opens another dialogue where you can put in a name and also a description more about that later you can change the color of your marker i'm gonna go with the heritage week pink and there are four types of shapes for your icon a circle which is very small a drop and a ball which i would have called a pin but I'm going with the default one because it's easier to click on the phone because it's bigger than, say, the circle. And then also you have a choice of many symbols that will be displayed in your marker. Um, every one comes in white and in black. I'm going for the black star and save. Then we go and add our next marker. And you will see when you click and point it there that it'll go back to the default color, which is a bit annoying. We want them all to look the same, or at least I want it to. 
So you go into change settings, default shape properties, and change the color to the color that you want for all your markers. You can always go back to a single one and change the color or shape or whatever if you want to. You save that and then when we place the next marker, you will see that it is already in the shape and color that we wanted. We add a name to it as well. And then I remembered I had forgotten to put in a name for the second one. So go back and change that and save. So to lead our visitors or users, um, I'm going to add a line to guide them along the trail. And you click on the symbol below the marker symbol and just click and release for every point along the line. And to finish drawing the line, you just double click on the last point. And then you add a name again and a description because just like the markers, the line is going to be clickable and both will be displayed. Again, you can go back and change everything later on. And we save and you click on disable editing. And when you click on the line, then you see that it displays what we've just put in. I personally find that is a bit too much pink. So I'm going to change the color of the line. To go back into editing mode, you click on the pencil in the top right corner. And click on the line and the small pencil there. Go into shape properties and choose a color of your liking. There's a lot to choose from. That makes it difficult to make up the mind sometimes. And you can also, also change the opacity and the weight. Just choose whatever you think is appropriate for your trail. And when you've made up your mind, you save again. Three stops, of course, isn't much of a trail, so we'll continue the line. Click on the little pencil for the line and on the last dot and it'll open a little dialogue and you click the right symbol and continue. And to drag the map along, you just keep your left mouse key pressed while you're drawing and just continue on. And if for some reason you put a dot in the wrong location, don't despair, just finish your line and you can drag all the dots along afterwards. And then add another marker, name it. And save. And like that, you finish your trail all the way leading your users along and just check and click if all your names are there. So this is the absolute basic trail map you can do. And to kind of force your users to start where you want them to start, you zoom in onto that point in my case, that was the castle. And center that point on your screen. And then the second from the bottom is save this center and zoom and you click on that. And click save at the top. And now we want to add some images to our map. I'm using Google Drive for the whole project because I presume most people have a Gmail address now. I won't explain how to use Google Drive, figure that out yourself. There are plenty of videos out there. You click on your image, 
click on get shareable link and you have to make sure that it's set on anyone with the link can view it. And you copy that link and open your notepad or word and you only need that very funny looking string of numbers and letters. Copy that and add it to the link that I will provide in the description. And we go back into our U map, click the pencil to edit our first marker. And next to description, you see a little question mark and it explains all the formatting options you have for the description text. You can add an image or you can add an image with the custom width, which we're gonna do. So you use your link that we have in the editor in the notepad and 200 is 200 pixels width and save that and click on disable editing. And see if it works. There we go, there is the benchmark. I decided later on not to use those pictures because what's the point of people exploring when they can see all the pictures in the map? But this is just to show you how it works. If you want to add some text, just type some text before the picture and after the picture or just before or just after, it's all is up to you. And save again, click disable editing. And click on your marker and you see that the text is there now. If you want to format the text a bit, again, go into edit mode, click on your marker, edit the marker. Click on the question mark to remind yourself of how to do it. So we want to have one line bold. So you add double stars before and after. It's very important. Before and after. And the first line we want to make a main heading. So we add the hashtag. Close and save. Disable editing there. I realized that I had used the wrong picture for the castle, so I replaced that. Next, we want to add an audio file. So I've uploaded the MP3 file to my Google Drive. Right click, get shareable link. And again, make sure it's set on anyone with the link can view it. Copy the link. Then we paste the link into our notepad or Word. And again, we only need that funny looking string. For the sound files, uh, the link is a bit different. I'll provide you with a simpler version in the description. So we copy that string again, as I said, and replace it in the one that we will use in UMAP. And copy that. So we take the link for sound files. And the most important thing in that link is actually the S in HTTPS colon, forward slash, forward slash, and so on. But I will, as I said, I will leave a simpler link in the description to the video, so you don't have to go through all that hassle. So go into your marker edit. You see I've already added more text there. And you paste your link. And for the sound files, you need to use iframes and you can define the width and height of it. So you have those three wavy brackets. They probably have a name, I don't know. Um, so three wavy brackets, um, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash iframe dot. And then it continues with your URL. And then you have the vertical line. And I use the 50 by 80 pixels that seem to be working for me. And you go back and you change the HTTP to HTTPS, very important. Otherwise it won't work. And then we open it and wait for it to load. 
and you see it has loaded the player there in the top. Uh, we press play just to check if it's playing the audio. And in it is. This is really the most difficult part I found. The next thing, just to make it a bit more user friendly maybe, I'm not sure, is to limit the bounds so people can move the map in all directions but they have the same view all the time. Go into edit mode, into change settings and you scroll down you see limit bounds and it already suggests you the coordinates and if you click on use current bounds you have to set your view beforehand of course save disable editing and now if you're trying to drag the map further north or south or any direction really it'll always jump back to that bounds that you have set it and you might want to add your credits just to tell people who made the map go into change settings, credits, and just type in whatever your name, your company's name, your historical society, and save. And that is shown now at the bottom right of your map, your name or whatever you just typed in. Then you go and check that all your markers work and all the content is there that you want it there. And of course my internet is very slow, so it takes too long to, to see if all the sound files are loading. But as soon as you see this, you kind of know that it's working. And that's the only image I kept because the benchmark is so difficult to find. And then of course, what's the use of the map without sharing it? So you go and share it. Uh, on the left side, there's the button that you probably know from WhatsApp and other um, social media. You can embed the map in, on your website using an iframe, which you can customize the height and width and everything. I won't go into that. You just copy the whole code there and put that on your website. And if you want to share on social media, you use the short URL there. And that's really all I have to tell you about making a map. I hope I covered all the basics. Um, you can always play around in UMAP and find out more. I haven't found out how to embed videos. I think it's not possible. You can always add a YouTube link to your descriptions in your marker description, of course, which is probably better anyway, because um, you, they can get the video on full screen, which they couldn't if they got just saw the video in the little pop-up that comes up on the map. Anyway, I hope I have encouraged you to try UMAP and even if it's not for a historical society, if you just play around with it for yourself and maybe map all the places you've been to or things like that and add your holiday pictures, whatever you feel like. Um, and you can use it for so many different kinds of things. If you just look at the homepage of UMAP, you'll find examples of maps people have just recently made and maybe get inspiration there. Thank you all for watching and hopefully see you in another video. Bye.